Well, firstly, the water is streaming in on the port side, now through both diesel heater uh, fitting. It's coming in in streams. The question is whether or not the water can get from the engine room through to the regular uh, sump here uh, in the bilge uh, midships. And then we've got this small little hose clamp, which has got a constant drip, which is now creating this stream of water that's just constantly flowing into the bulges. So the water's coming from there. There's actual drops coming off. There you can see one forming already off of that hose clamp. There it goes. And it's creating these streaks running all the way down. You can see the amount of water in there. The bulge pumps now are not working. In fact, it goes all around the engine mounting block. And we've been running the bulge pumps. And we've been running the bulge pumps all the way to here. So it's around the entire mounting block, sitting just below the foam over there, the sound dampening. Clearly you can see the splattering that's coming. There's the diesel pipe, and there's the splattering, which is uh, like obviously diesel uh, you know the black inside the diesel exhaust dropping dropping on there it's completely off okay and there's a fitting that comes out of the side here that goes into an owl right okay, that's mm. what Kevin was okay. Saying, yeah. now on that owl fitting where it breaks through the fiberglass yeah. it doesn't look like it's secret from the inside it's secret from the outside no. what are you doing there Okay, so we've put a cork uh, that we've built up and seeker into the diesel heater exhaust. Uh, the cork only goes in that far, I didn't want to cut it anyway. And I'm trying to seeker on the outside. So we've got this plug on the outside to try to stop water going in. Garen's on the inside, connecting a hose pipe, taking it high up uh, to stop the water going up in case it does get through here. So it's a double uh, uh, protection. Operation. Operation Sealing six. the diesel heater exhaust from spilling seawater from the outside. What Yachting have done is they've taken this internal, the smaller piece, and they've pushed it into the exhaust pipe. So the exhaust fitting has its own stainless steel pipe. They've pushed the small piece in, uh, and then uh, they've used more of this on the other side of that so they used this as a joiner and this was where we were getting every time we play with this join which was breaking that's where uh, 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 rusted water would come out so this is really the the type of thing that they've used this is uh, this is a br basically a brand new insulation and this is what it looks like already with the water that's been coming in and and rusting this and it just lasted whatever three months four months maybe uh, without even we've only been at sea for a month and, and that's what Action Yachting have done. This entire insulation needs to be redone. The entire diesel insulation, or, or certainly the exhaust uh, related to the diesel insulation. And we can, we can only hope that the seawater that's come in through that exhaust hasn't run all the way back into the actual diesel into the eaters, diesel heater. We know that which it's running back because we we've already to... found it under the bed on yep. the port side. Uh, and now we've got to go check uh, whether it's actually damaged the diesel heaters as well. Okay, talking about action, this is what uh, Action Yachting provided to join the pieces of, of uh, exhaust pipe. So you can see they put a hose clamp around here and this piece of tin just, that's what it does. So it certainly wasn't clamping it and it certainly just pushed gaps. It would have just been fumes all the way through the boat when you run the exhaust, uh, the diesel heater. We've got water dripping through here, right which is coming down over here. So another one of the leaks that we've been getting in the engine room is through this rudder post. Um, in there, basically this, a cap similar to this had come off. Fortunately, Robertson, the Robertson Kane guy gave us a spare cap. So Garen's gonna seek it out on. We've just cleaned it out with fresh water making sure it's all dry and then uh, we're going to seek that cap on and hope hope that it stays on so the problem as the robertson kane guy mentioned with those caps is there's no way other than seeker to put it on it doesn't screw on it doesn't have a thread uh, there's no bolt or nut to hold it on it just drops on uh, which of course is a bit of a design issue 
Um, so potentially we were going to screw that one on. We're very thankful that we found that spare. Uh, we're going to request another two because they do just fall off. We had a couple of them fall off already. Uh, and as I say, the Robson guy, uh, Kane guy replaced it uh, and gave me that one spare. But clearly they just keep falling off. Uh, and then we're going to try to take some advice from Robertson Kane uh, as to how to secure it on with uh, a piece of hardware rather, like a screw. Um, I think the uh, uh, material below uh, into which the screw would go, I think is aluminium. Um, so we'd need to have that tapped uh, properly uh, for that screw to be able to go in and, and hold that lid on properly. Of course we'd use Seeker anyway, uh, but it's just something that would prevent it from falling out. So, yeah, okay, so we've checked. There's not those two fittings, but you can see the water shining in there. See the sloshy. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so we've tracked the water leak. Aaron's tracked it to here. Uh, the fitting on the right is the, uh, which is leaking mostly is the exhaust local exhaust for this diesel heater it's an, i mean everywhere this job has gone to do with the exhaust is a nightmare and and, and i know there's going to be a crap load of excuses that's what they do on the dock i'm just waiting to hear what the excuse is oh we've never done it before or whatever yeah but that's not an excuse you look at something like that and your nice. brain should tell you that it's yeah no no absolutely even a child can see that that's shocking yeah. I'm going to leave this open, I'm just going to... Yeah, we've got to think we've about got to it, think yeah. about a plan. Oh, what to do, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and plus, plus it's damaged areas of the boat. Now we know why that floor, the whole plywood floor down there is, is totally sopping. I mean, that's going to pack up. And all of that, all of that, what's that other stuff, that foam that they've got in there, it's all moldy and permanently wet. It must be coming from here, but it's actually coming from there and running all the way along. Yeah, it's just shocking here. Yeah. Three diesel heaters uh, um, exhaust, all causing absolute mayhem. The the diesel heater above it, but basically it's all of it is the action using diesel heaters. This whole thing, and plus we don't know now how far up the this water is going. I mean, I, I doubt it would get up to there because it's going backward from it. Yeah. But it's definitely there's enough pressure that in that first bit over there. It's running out of that join thing there. And that's what's rusting obviously on the inside, running in there. Then it's running into the electrical system on that side and then it's dropping down into the bilge. So it's found a hole, all these wires, all these wires are wet. You can see that water rushing in there as well. Did you see it? Oh, it's from that, from behind, yeah. Yeah. So this is the water, the sea salt water, sea water that has come through the diesel exhaust, the diesel heater exhaust pipe, and this is all landed up. This is just collected from our inverter cabinet, where all of our electrics are. On it. It's about 500 mils to a liter of salt water around our electrics. Fix the leak that's coming in from the diesel heater on the inboard port side. Yeah. Well, that other <laughs> okay, so Garen reckons the inside, the cork will go inside and the pipe will go on the outside. So we should be able to stem the flow of the uh, water from this, the third diesel heater that's uh, overflowing so badly. Just to get it hard so that you can hammer it in. I 100% agree with you. Yeah, two rolls of tape. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, okay. the tape is okay so basically water is coming in through the skin fitting that is the outlet for the uh, bilge pumps and slowly just draining in so 
yeah hopefully with that plug we get no more water in here underway but you see that's not something that can be tested when we're at anchor yeah it has to be t you can only find out when you're underway yeah i think it's this non-return valve yeah no the non-return valves are crap they shouldn't be returning water so we either put a one of those scupper covers facing backwards so water doesn't come in in the first place uh, or we put another non-return valve at the top uh, or both Agreed. Yeah. Okay. So we, it double doubles up on itself, which is yeah. great. Yeah. Exactly. Then we know for sure. But I want to have a look at the inside of this as well, and just see what, what it looks like. Yeah. Could be a problem there. With this pump and this. Yeah. Pump. I mean, we've already had like you know all the guys from Robson Kane and uh, um, you know uh, the aftermarket guys from what are they called? Uh, action yachting have found numerous different sources of leaks. I mean, it's amazing. This would be on this side probably about leak number 15 by now, you know. And then you get some guys that say, oh, you know, bulges should have water in it. You know, these some should have water in them. I don't think it should. Uh, I don't think so at all. Having water in means water's coming in from somewhere. Yeah, especially so, this that tastes even yeah, remotely like so. Yeah. And you shouldn't be getting water coming in from anywhere. And the reason for this, in my opinion, is so that when water is here uh, you know that water's thing. coming in somewhere so you start to diagnose where it's coming in from yeah. and then you get rid of it so that it's dry and so that when it does come in again you know oh hang on a second something else is leaking yeah. so we have to get to the point and i've been trying that for over a year i mean if this is it then this is finally it and we were getting tons and tons and tons of different leaks uh, just at uh, the vna marina you know not even at sea so, yeah, now that we've been at sea, the action yachting uh, diesel heaters have just, I mean, you may as well have just, you know, punched a hole straight in the bottom of the boat almost. It was so bad, well, I right? mean, for something like this to let water come back into, and we saw it coming yeah. out of this pump, this pump should only be sucking water. It shouldn't be letting water, letting back. water back. Otherwise, yeah. it's failed yeah. at its one I mean, job. basically, yeah, it has failed as, at its primary job. Basically, as you're going along in the sea, it's putting water into the boat because of the bulge pump. Exactly. Not taking water out. In, and this pipe is quite high, so it's just the pressure of it just constantly coming yeah. out here. Yeah, yeah. An extra one of these. Yeah, and, then yeah. And, a, and a good quality one of these, one that works. Because clearly these don't. Because clearly these don't. And they also don't work in their toilets. I mean, you actually get this the draining makes coming me, back. This makes me think about what uh, the same, maybe the same thing is happening in your, in your bulge, in your pump. Could be exactly that, exactly yeah. that. And I'm going to go yeah. maybe do the same thing there. It might be positioned a little bit differently, and that's why it's so much less on that side. So it could be exactly that. I'm just glad that we've maybe found it, because... Well, not maybe found it, maybe found one of them. I mean, just now, the other day, you found it as in the, <laughs> the diesel heater exhaust, which is just totally destroyed. I mean, that thing is just a nightmare. So this is where at least some of our water in the port bilge is coming from. As you can see, that's the water maker. It's dripping in hugely. There's, look at the massive puddle here. Mm. Okay, so using baby powder, Carol's found another leak or source of water. In that bilge, Melinda and Garen have gone forward to try to find out what that is. And there's a whale branded pump in here. And uh, it seems that that's leaking. It might be running onto the pump from somewhere. Is it, can, has it got space to be put on more? It must go more. Okay, so it's leaking, yeah, so it's shower leaking, yeah. Okay, but she's definitely getting seawater, so this means this is just one leak. Carol's getting seawater. This is the shower pump there and it's leaking, but it's fresh water. And you said you've definitely got seawater in the front. Yeah, oh, like not even a question. So we got more than one leak. Is it leaking through here then? Yeah, you found it's this by accident. We've got leak of the diesel in the in there. Just touch it for me. It's, it's coming from there. Touch it in the in the boat. Yeah, touch it. Yeah, there it is. So 
So this next leak was the most irritating one of them all. We just could not figure out what on earth was leaking. It was happening in this engine room on the floor right below the door. Pink oily substance would be leaking into that corner as you could see on the photo that I posted and it would be coming from somewhere up here. We could not figure out for the life of us where it would be dripping from. The only items above here were either sealed with absolutely no way of anything leaking or electronic stuff which definitely wouldn't have some pink greasy stuff leaking from them. Then we discovered this pipe and wondered what on earth it could possibly be and then realized that it belonged to uh, just above the engine room we have an electric grill and leopard in the wise wisdom fantastic design issue thought that it would be a great idea to run the grease trap pipe straight down into the engine room and just end it right there. So after having a wonderful electric barbecue you are expected to just open the tap and let all the grease and fat run straight into your engine room. And then hopefully one day, mixed with a bit of sea water and whatever else comes in here, it would run into the bulge and be pumped out into the ocean, if it doesn't mess the bulge up. But in the meanwhile, you've got stinky oil from food just lying on your engine room floor. Well, luckily we had never used it, so our pipe is perfectly clean. And before we do use it, we will most definitely try and attach some kind of a bottle um, at the bottom there so that we don't have any of that greasy stuff leaking into our engine room. But that didn't solve our problem. We still had a pink greasy stuff that kept leaking um, onto the floor. So what we decided to do, Garen and I, we were going to suspend a piece of fabric across the opening of the door, try and tie it off into each of the corners and then just watch to see where the drip was coming from. The day that we got all the fabric and ties out to do that we decided to obviously do it from the outside in and that's when we discovered the offending item. This guy, the hydraulic arm that holds the engine room door open without it falling on your head. Karen and I both from the top noticed the pink drip coming out of that little section there and as you can see it's got absolutely no pressure left in it at all. So we've had to remove it to try and see if we can't find a replacement for it. None of the shops that we've been to this end of the world have the correct size one so in the meanwhile we tie the engine room open with a piece of rope and hope that it doesn't fall on our head. Right, so here we've also got rust all over here around both wheels and in here there's rust along this as well and then if we come around to this side 
we've got a better angle at where this thing is rusted over here, the, the mountings. Um, yeah, and then there's just obviously this kind of rust inside these bolts. And again, if you look at the screw holes over there, right here and here, there's rust in there. Okay, and then just looking from the top of the engine now, there's rust over there and in these little gaps here. I've tried to get most of it off, but yeah, there's still, as you can see, just around the nut. Jumping forward to real time. Firstly, thanks to everybody that watched, liked, commented, and subscribed to our channel after our last video. All of these actions help our channel immensely. We are very happy to let you know that we are confident that the aftermarket division of Leopard, the issues Marcel will handle, will be taken care of. So far the shocking diesel heater installation issue that you've just seen in this last video has all but been resolved. And we are working with Mosol to do the necessary to get the reinstalled alternators working correctly and to fix the wires under the rudder bar. We have also had a meeting with the person at the factory that will look into each of our factory warranty claims. We will update you as each of these claims is handled. In the meanwhile, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks.